Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hi, everyone, and welcome aboard to the Between the Lines podcast. I'm Andy Keaton, and today we are joined by a special guest, Antoine Belayev. Uh, Antoine is the lead North of North America at Fairtick. And prior to joining Fairtick, Antoine spent the last 10 years at Metrolinx, which is the Toronto Region's Transit Authority, where he occupied a range of senior roles in innovation, sustainability, long-range planning, customer and fare experience. And uh, he's a native of Geneva, Switzerland. Um, he is a registered professional planner in Ontario and holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree from McGill University here in Montreal, where I am. Um, shout out to Montreal and a Master of Science in Planning from the University of Toronto, as well as a Master of Strategic Leadership towards Sustainability uh, from the Blanking uh, Institute of Technology in Sweden. I probably pronounced that wrong, but we're super excited to have Antoine on today. He clearly has a really interesting background we're going to talk about. Um, so today we're talking about a really interesting topic. Uh, the idea is flexible transit, mobile ticketing. We're going to get into that. But thanks for being on today, Antoine. It's good to have you on. I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's dive in a bit to this, this idea of, of mobile ticketing for public transit, making it flexible. Um, can you just tell me a bit about, you know, what is mobile ticketing look like? Like, how does that look for a user who's using mobile ticketing, um, whether it's fair tick or, or whatever system it might be? So first I'll start with what it's not. I was at a party the other day and I talked about mobile ticketing and I could see this like look of alarm on people's faces. And I realized <laughs> they thought I was talking about issuing tickets, like fine. Ah. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is about paying for transit. We're not talking about fines. This is this is a tool to uh, allow you to not uh, get ticketed. Um, pardon me, the pun. So um, as you know, paying for transit has been uh, really traditional for a long time. Uh, cash, tokens, more recently cards. Um, and, and now everybody likes to do everything on their phone because it's really a little piece of their private life, their home that they can customize. Uh, in their pocket. So, so we're moving the payment experience, allowing somebody maybe with disabilities to customize the experience for themselves oh, and to give them the time that they need to, uh, to, to figure out what, what they want to do and then make sure that they have the right product. Okay. I like that you first started off with that story. Yes. This is not about giving people tickets for not getting, for not paying for transit. It's about making it easier to pay for transit. Um, so let's get into that exact piece. I think one of the things about mobile ticketing that's exciting to me is it makes it more user friendly to use transit, at least on the fare side. Um, so can you explain a bit more about how, uh, using a mobile ticketing system can actually make it so as a user, I'm, you know, less confused. It's a little more intuitive to what I need to, like how much I need to pay or, you know, I'm making sure I'm not overspending or buying something I'm not supposed to use. So I remember I was in, in New York City as a teenager coming from Switzerland and very intimidated by buses <laughs> and bus drivers because in Switzerland you have vending machines and then you could look at the vending machine and, and you know, it has uh, all the time in the day. You can stare at it and try to figure out figure it out. But in New York City, the bus arrives and there's a somewhat intimidating bus driver Yep. And, uh, and and you have uh, two seconds to get it right. And it's New York, right? So they don't suffer fools. And yep. so I said, what did I do? Like many tourists in New York City, I just ended up walking everywhere. <laughs> so we, we don't we do not do that. And um, uh, But it's tough for agencies to design a mobile, uh, a mobile ticket app. So either they have very, very few options to keep it super simple, but they might not give you what you want, or they put their entire offering uh, like a ticket, a weekly pass, 24 hours, weekend, et cetera, plus the concessions. And then it's, yeah. it's really confusing. So 
um, what uh, what we try to do is to really strip away all that complexity. And uh, what we end up with is a big green button. And when you arrive, uh, you just slide that button and then all the complexity is hidden in the background. Uh, at the end of the trip, you check out. Uh, the system uses AI to check you out if you don't, and then goes through and rummages through all the potential fares. Um, so in Switzerland, which really gave that foundation, there's so many different fares, regional, local, national. It just goes through everything and just gives you the best deal. That's so cool. I really like that idea. I was recently on a call with someone um, and you know, I just moved to Montreal three months ago and they were talking about how, oh, there's this fare you can use on the bus system for weekends and you can get unlimited weekend travel. And I was like, I don't even know about that. Like what I don't even know about in my own, you know, city what kind of fares I could be using. And this is so simple, it's just a button. I love that. That's an awesome idea. Um and then so then from what it sounds like, the system then you work with the the transit agencies to build this all in. What kind of technology does a transit agency have to have in place for this to work? Is it really complicated to get them to get this set up? Well, they, they need they need a bus or a streetcar or a subway. And we, we really want them to worry about that, which is providing amazing, safe, reliable, frequent service to their customers. And then we designed the, the, the offering to um, make um, no demands or very few demands on transit agencies. Um, oh, I, my right. colleague told me that there was an agency where a small agency, and it was Mr. Guy, who's the general manager, but really had no staff. And he implemented... Uh, the solution all by himself with us. Wow. So, so it was just, hey, what do you want here or there? And uh, in other cases, uh, we just implemented in the south of France. Uh, no one went to the south of France. It was it was difficult because of uh, uh, travel restrictions. So we did everything remotely. So an agency needs first to to figure out what it wants from a fair standpoint, sure. uh, and we really encourage them to to think outside of the box of what they already have, because we, we know origin and destination. So we work with agencies that are, um, you know, letting creative juices flow and, for example, creating um, uh, special fares for short trips or uh, special promotions. But uh, to go back to basics, we don't need any equipment. We don't need any interaction with their IT systems. Oh, what great. we do need is uh, their GTFS data. So, so basically, for those who don't know what it is, it's where the stations and stops um, are and what uh, routes they run. So we create this mental map of, of the system. We need their fare policies. We need um, to have a discussion around how the payments will flow. Uh, discussion around data protection. So um, we abide by European GDPR legislation, which is really, really mm -hmm. strict. And um, uh, and we do need to uh, uh, we do need to talk about uh, launches and communications and 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 things like that. But uh, we really designed it to be um, as uh, light as possible on uh, on agencies because we want them to focus on on their core business. Yeah, and I like that it's uh, certainly, you know, there's some work to getting it set up just on figuring out the exact fare structure and having this communication, but really it's not that hard. It's not a, you don't have to put anything in the buses. You don't have to put anything in the subways. Um, I think that's a really uh, beneficial idea for, for transit agencies to be thinking about. Um, and particularly even, you know, now as a lot of transit agencies in the, uh, certainly North America and, and also worldwide have been hit pretty hard from by COVID. They have budget restrictions. This is a way to kind of get more people on without having to spend too much money. I think it's a, I think it's really interesting. So let's, let's shift a bit, you know, back to the, the, you know, transit rider. Um, how does this, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier. I liked the idea of, someone with a disability could actually have maybe better access to um, transit because of this. But how does, how does this kind of mobile ticketing system um, help with equity? So, um, I mean, we, we need to be 
we need to be fair and honest here. You do need a smartphone, but um, you know, um, looking at, at figures uh, and and I've been attending some some really amazing uh, workshops organized by uh, APTA, the American Public Transit Association, talking about um, uh, smartphone access. A lot of people have smartphones these days. The issue is that sometimes they, they're not comfortable using all the features, and mm. that's also why we made it as uh, as easy as possible. So you do need a you do need a smartphone. But if you think about the experience that um, has been, you know generally the case, not just in North America, but uh, but pretty much anywhere, is that very often you need to um, put a cash load on an account, on a card, um, or you need to prepay. So you need to buy a pass in advance, um, and then you need to predict the future. And it's it can be onerous for, for low-income people to um, have the cash. So to give you an example, so I'm not in that situation, but um, of, of, of needing that money. But um, over last year, I haven't used Transit a lot and I had $50 on my card that just sat there. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody has $50 or even $20 that they can give you in advance. The other yeah. thing is that um, they may not, uh, uh, um, they, they may prefer to hold on to $80, $100, $150 or whatever your your monthly pass costs and, and just pay as you go. So I think it's pretty commonly written in the literature that uh, that monthly passes are not great uh, are great for for equity. Um, so so we try to really remove the uh, the obligation to to prepay and also guess because it's a little bit of a gamble with your money, right? What if you, right. you buy a pass and then um, and then after a while you um, you don't. Uh, uh, you realize that you're going to be working from from home more, or uh, maybe you uh, you're sick and and you can't uh, you can't use transit. So uh, you mentioned uh, um, uh, users who who have disabilities. So with a smartphone, you can magnify the the print. We can use a screen reader, um, and we're very proud of the association that we have with uh, an organization called uh, ProSenic Tute, which is the equivalent of Canadian CARP or AARP in the U.S. So it's mm-hmm. the, the um, retirees or seniors association. And they created a mini course uh, where uh, users learn to, they, they all get together, they put the app and then they go and travel together. And the demonstration is, hey, you know what? It's super easy because before you had to figure out, is it $3, $2, $5, what kind of pass do I need? And it can be, it can be stress inducing, right? For somebody who doesn't use uh, transit very often, especially for seniors. Uh, and we get testimonial after testimonial of, of seniors who tell us, um, I love using it because I just need to press the button and then it does the rest for me. That's great. I, I think that's a really, I think it's really um, important to really be thinking about these issues around, certainly not everyone has a smartphone, but those that do, making it easy to use it um, just because you have one doesn't mean you can actually do anything with it particularly if you don't have, like you said, I think the big piece is you don't have, you know, just uh, money that you can put in and load onto a card and then use it whenever you need to use it. Um, I like this idea of charging you as you go. I think that that makes sense. Um, so let's, let's dive a bit kind of into a use case here. So your uh, fair tick is based in Switzerland. So I'm thinking there could be some good projects that are happening there, but elsewhere as well. Is there an interesting, um, you know, story that you? I guess you've already told us some good stories, but an interesting, another interesting story um, about, you know, what, how a transit agency is using this and how it's helped users to really understand their their transit better and you know get more use out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we um, we've been working with a number of agencies at the, I would say, the local level, regional level, and what we find is that. Uh, sometimes we're approached by uh, an agency at the local level uh, in in Germany, and then the the town next door says, "Hey, I want it too." And then the state says, uh, "Let's make it statewide." Um, to backtrack, in Switzerland, we're fortunate that we're we have achieved nationwide coverage, so you can actually use the app wow. anywhere in Switzerland. So um, that means you can take a streetcar in Geneva, and then you can get on the national train and go to Zurich. Uh, and then uh, and then take a commuter train in Zurich, 
uh, you can even take boats and cable cars and all the wow, that's great. That, that that Switzerland has to offer. Um, so we, you asked about a use case. Let's let's um, do a bit of a composite. Um, so so first we have um, um, we have a number of situations where the municipalities thought about um, how they would change the way they charge for transit. So. Um, there's there's a, an innovation that's taking Germany by storm. They call it they call it a tarif, which is electronic fare, and mm-hmm. it, it's electronic because it's powered by by a mobile phone. And the goal of this is to make the base fare much cheaper. So let's say it's two or three dollars. So it goes down under two dollars, maybe a dollar and something, and then you pay by mile or kilometer. Uh, with a trip cap and a daily cap. So you get the benefit of attracting new users. Um, and again, research has shown that uh, very often low-income users travel short distances. It could be seniors, for example, somebody with a bad hip, they will travel two stops and they don't want to pay the same as somebody who, who sure. crossed the, the city. But at the same time, we know that because of uh, uh, job housing mismatch, there are some people who have to do long trips. So this is where trip caps or daily caps can uh, can help them. So that's one thing. And it's really um, it's really something that's becoming more and more common in, in Germany. And it's powered by the technology because nobody wants to be tapping off. Um, so the phone really takes care of that for you. The other thing is that um, cities uh, have been um, uh, uh, working with us. For example, um, there's a city in Germany called Halle and they have a Christmas market. Uh, and I guess they were worried about people enjoying their blue wine too much. And uh, <laughs> they identified two bus stops near the Christmas market and made transit free during Christmas market wow. day. So we can pinpoint these incentives. Another place in uh, Switzerland um, provided 30% off uh, on Black Friday. So I guess Black Friday is now a global thing. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I'm, I'm sure you will talk about employers. So maybe I'll, I'll stop here. Yeah, no, I think it's that that's a good segue into what we want to talk about next, which is um, just how flexible yet like really targeted we can get with subsidies. You mentioned the Christmas market in Germany. I think that's an awesome uh, point. You said just two stops they identified. And if you start or end your trip there, you get free transit. Is that right? Yeah. And you don't need to register. You don't need a code. You just need the app and the app just wow. recognizes that you that you went there. That's so cool. I think that's an awesome idea. I mean, I think a lot of our listeners, I mean, I, I'm thinking the wheels might be turning in your head. You're thinking, wait a second. Um, I'm an employer, let's say, uh, and I know that I want to subsidize transit, but maybe I don't really feel like uh, subsidizing someone's trip uh, you know, on the weekend to the bar, but I would like to subsidize them coming into the office. So I'm thinking, I'm going to make the assumption that that's something we can do here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more, like how does an employer just dive into it? How does an employer take advantage of this kind of system? So I'll start with what we've done. So um, employers, I think the world over, um, many of them have been buying monthly passes and it really yep. worked when people were commuting nine to five. And this is really the generation that gave rise to a lot of carpooling as well. Everybody has the same schedules. Uh, and so monthly passes work and they're a very attractive benefit. Um, but more and more, even before the pandemic, it was obvious that uh, uh, people had increasingly um, uh, flexible schedules and uh, employers are looking at the expense and also the logistics we've heard, the logistics of, mm. of um, sometimes mailing physical passes or um, trying to determine who's going to be on vacation doesn't need one doesn't need one that that month, especially in places where passes are fairly expensive. So what we do is um, we we uh, work in a similar way as with the Christmas market with employers, and so an employer will say, hey, you know what, I'm going to um, reimburse fifty percent of all trips to the stop or station in front of my building. Monday to Friday, we even have an employer that said, um, we have two sites uh, and we're tired. We, we store passes in, uh, in the receptionist's desk, but people never return the passes. <laughs> so now we're going to put in the app, but it's, but it's, these are, these are stops um, that are, you know, in the city. So we only want people 
uh, to, to get free transit between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. So it's that flexible that you can really pick wow. and choose. Employers can also say, we'll give you a $50 credit. So this is great for employers that don't have a government mandate to, uh, to provide TDM benefits. And they want to provide an employee benefit, but they don't, you know, they don't want to break the bank. And um, the benefit for them is that they don't have to buy a pass. And also they can tell, hey, everyone, you're all getting $50, but then um, they only pay for what is used. So somebody who goes on vacation or just walks to work, um, they feel good that they have this $50 benefit, uh, but, but they, uh, the employer only pays for what is actually used. Sure. I um, love this idea. That's really interesting. Um, and sorry, I think I cut you off there. I just wanted to, to throw in that uh, we've been seeing the same thing uh, as well when we're talking to employers. The monthly pass system is, is uh, certainly been, uh, it's a little antiquated now as people are only maybe working in an office one, two, three days a week. So this sounds really cool that you can actually uh, just subsidize what people are using. That's such a, a great idea. Um, but yeah, I, I think I cut you off. To, you can finish what you were saying. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to say as well that, the, the, you know, if you think about the, the Christmas market and you think about the employers. So in the case of an employer, obviously you would have, you would have a cohort. So you have a voucher code and, uh, and then you make sure that these are employees. But you can also think about um, all kinds of permutations uh, on top of it. We, we did a promotion with a mall that was worried about their parking lot. And oh, um, uh, we have a partnership with a car maker uh, that uh, provides um, um, a f- about 40 US dollar a monthly credit to purchasers of their EVs and hybrid models. But again, the, the customer says, oh, this is a really nice perk from the car company. And they, they encourage me to, to use transit for really small trips or really long trips. But then again, the mm-hmm. car maker only pays for, for what is used. So transferring wow. it to a fast growing area, uh, you could imagine a city working with developers or um, landlords. And as we know in TDM, the best time to change habits is when people are experiencing a change yeah. in work or lifestyle. And so we could say, well, um, any, anyone who buys a condo or rents an apartment or new tenants in, in an office space, they will get $50, $100, whatever you want a month. And that could be an agreement with the municipality um, around the, the overall mobility plan for, for, that, uh, for that employer or, or developer. Hmm. And then again, they only pay for what is used. So if somebody just walks to work, uh, needs to drive to work because they have to pick up and drop off kids, then the, the benefit is not, uh, is not paid. And so transit agencies might say, hey, wait a minute, I, I want people to prepay lots and lots of things, but that really depresses participation. So when you have a program that's, that's really efficient, where uh, employers only pay, or, or developers or whatever only pay for what is used, uh, then participation can go up because the price uh, of the cost of the program goes down. Interesting. I think that's a, I think it's an important point I actually just made, which is um, this could also benefit the transit agency in that the biggest problem consistently for most transit agencies is ridership and continuing to get people on. Um, it's a chicken and the egg kind of situation where it's like, how do we bring people on if then the service isn't as good because we don't have enough money to make a better service and we need better service to get people on. This can help hopefully, um, you know, bring more people into the system uh, and, and spending more money in the long term. But I'm thinking there might also be another benefit to the transit agencies, which we haven't talked about, which is there's got to be a, a good amount of interesting data that comes from this use as well. Is that something transit agencies can use and what kind of benefits can they get from that? Yeah, yeah. I just want to go back to what you said. It reminded me of a fantastic conversation I had with a with a transit agency, and the the you know you love these conversations when the creative juices get flowing. And uh, my my counterpart was saying, hey, you know, we've we've really wanted to to augment service and around that business park, but we we don't really have any way to ensure participation. And uh-huh. and she said with a benefit that is targeted at that bus route 
uh, where the we create a channel for for the employers in that business park to participate and wow. that can justify that service. So it's not just so don't just think about fair collection in isolation. It's kind of an end of pipe thing that sure. you will after you've considered your service, but consider it something that um, helps you fund new service. This is where data is really important. So you were asking about data. Um, we have origin destination data and all points in between. So as I said, we're GDPR compliant. So that means um, all the data is anonymized and um, mm -hmm. we're, we face a lot of scrutiny from, um, from privacy officers from various jurisdictions. So nobody has to worry about it. But agencies can really understand the, the OD pair. They can understand the transfer points, how long people are, are transferring. And what's really interesting for them is also what happens over time. So if they change services, what is the impact on, on, um, on demand uh, in a very, very pinpointed way? So for example, they can even, they can even measure the impact of uh, making station uh, modifications because they can, they can look at the impact on, uh, on transfer time. They could even go to a developer or, a, or, or their real estate partner and say, I can tell you that people uh, spend seven point um, seven seven and a half minutes connecting. And so the partner would say, oh, that's enough time for, for a coffee and they can calibrate mm -hmm. their offer. Um, so huh. it really creates kind of a virtuous circles. And um, it can also allow agencies to determine where to increase uh, frequency because we have, we, we know uh, demand um, between stop in stop pairs. So we know exactly um, how many people are using the app. So, so obviously you have to reach a certain penetration, but we know how many people are between stop A and B. And so that can tell the agency, oh, I need to increase frequency or I have crowding issues here. Um, and conversely, at the edge of the network, uh, they might say, oh, maybe we can short term some short term some services or maybe we can switch uh, some services to on demand. Wow. I think uh, that's so cool. I mean, I love I love uh, the potential of using data to really improve the whole system um, and bringing in not just public transit agencies, but developers, employers, you know, everyone in the system to. I uh, help encourage people to get on transit. It's awesome. So what can, you know, I'm an employer, I'm listening to this, or I'm a transit agency and I'm listening to this. What, what do I do to get started doing something like this? How do, how do I do that? So we made it really easy. So let's start with transit agencies. We made it really easy, as I said, to, to jump on. We have two apps and they're already in every uh, store. So you can go, go right now and download the Fairtick app or the FTQ Lab app. The FTQ Lab app was designed to try things together. So you can uh, you can contact us. We can put in your GTFS data in a matter of you know a couple of weeks. Then you can start uh, experimenting the journey mapping um, uh, version of the app, and then um, we can we can do pilots really really quickly and really inexpensively. And we always say you know don't don't just believe experts. Don't believe us. Just put it out there and and see with customers, you know how they how they perceive the app. Um, with the Blue Lab app, you can even create different cohorts and you can try different things. So we have um, we have a consulting partner in Europe that's testing different scenarios. So they're doing they're like, what about this distance based uh, fare that we that everybody talks about? Like, how is mm -hmm. it uh, uh, welcomed by customers? What about zones? Uh, what about this? What about that? So we love what ifs. We can even pilot uh, um, a partnership with uh, with an employer third party. Now, if you're an employer and you're not in a city where we already have the service, then um, what I would love to do is talk about how you may use the the app. And then let's go together to, to the transit agency and say, hey, you may already have an app, but um, don't think you only you only need one. Um, sure. Your app may do, um, um, you know, uh, what what it does really, really well. Um, but let's try this together. Let's try this this employer partnership. We're bringing the employer. Um, you don't have to do anything. Um, you know, if um, if an agency doesn't have gates, we really don't need any hardware. We we do visual inspection 
uh, very, very frequently in, uh, in Europe, just looking at the screen to determine that the, the, um, the ticket is valid. Uh, if there are gates, we can even work on a, on a pilot with optical readers, or if there are optical readers, we can uh, integrate with these. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited by the prospect of working with, uh, with employers and then going to the transit agency and say, hey, you have to do very little. Um, let's, let's just try it. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited to see this continue to grow. Um, and really, it's just having those conversations that there's so many benefits to everyone here. I think it's important to really start those conversations. Um, so we're, you know, we're towards the end of our time here. Uh, we've talked about a lot of different things. This is a, a really interesting kind of just tons of benefits to this. But can you tell me, I guess, you know, in, a, in just a few sentences, summarize for us and tell us, you know, why will these flexible, you know, transit, mobile ticketing help save the planet? So um, it, it can help save the planet because it's uh, easy to use. And if it's easy to use, then people will use it. And if more people use transit, then fewer people drive and, and then it, it helps a little bit. On the agency side, um, it's simple to implement. It's simple to try. And so we take a lot of headaches uh, away and again, helping them focus on, on you know, quality of service and getting money from government or all the things that they have to worry about. Um, it's smart. So um, because we make the interface so simple, um, you can actually go and make your, your fares smarter and, and maybe uh, following you know, economic theory, um, either make more money from people who can pay and should pay uh, or bring new use cases to bring new customers. Um, we have the data as well. So you can create this virtuous circle of finding out more about how people are using the service, the impact of your service changes. Um, and then finally, it's, uh, it's fast to implement. So you can try it if you don't like it. Um, it's not like we built all these integrations or bought all the software we can go away and then try again somewhere else. I love it. I think, I think this is a really interesting solution for the future. Uh, like I said, I'm excited to see it, where it goes. Um, to everyone you know, listening and, and watching, thank you for, for being on and, and following along with this conversation today. Make sure you subscribe to our email list where we provide some more information um, about the conversation we've had. You can do that at betweenthelines.io. And follow us and give us a like and a rating on all your, uh, your favorite podcast um, apps, whether that's Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or whatever, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you aren't watching, you're really missing out because you can actually see our expressions. And it's a lot more interesting a conversation when you see me smiling and nodding to everything Antoine says um, versus maybe what it seems like when you're listening to it and you're not quite sure what my reaction is. It's always good. That's a little tip for you. Um, once again, Antoine, thanks for being on. And we have one final question for you, which is about our commuter playlist that we're building on Spotify for all those people who aren't quite to the office yet and need a little bit of extra listening. So can you tell us, Antoine, is there anything you want to add to our playlist? Any songs you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll go eclectic and non-eclectic. So I'll start with the non-eclectic and I'll just go with my gut answer when when you uh, initially posed the question. You, you talked about commuter, you talked about song and of course, Celine Dion's I Drove All Night <laughs> into mind, which I think will be familiar to a lot of, uh, uh, of your audience. And then something a little more eclectic. Uh, there's this great singer who recently passed away uh, from France called Anne Sylvestre and uh, she, she uh, wrote and, and, and sang a beautiful song called Les gens qui doutent which is about um, human uh, fragility and uh, doubt and imperfection uh, and even if you don't understand French it's, it's a really mellow beautiful song it is I, I can't agree more um, great additions uh, thank you again for being on Antoine um, and we'll continue to stay in touch because we are excited to see where this goes and everyone um, join us again next week. We're excited to um, have a really interesting conversation again and 
uh, continue to have you on. Antoine, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.